Right now, most of the galaxies that we see, um, we can see them, but we know that we could never get to them, no matter how fast we traveled. They're going away from us at the speed of light or beyond, so we can't we can't ever get to them. So there's all this beautiful real estate that's just smiling and waving at us, and we can never get to it. Yeah. But that's if we go through space-time. But if we recognize that space-time is just a data structure, it's not fundamental. We're not little things inside space-time. Space-time is a little data structure in our perceptions. Mm -hmm. It's just the other way around. What's up, guys? I'm Chris Slato, founder of UAP Society. Today, I wanted to show this awesome clip from Donald Hoffman. Donald Hoffman's one of the few scientists out there that's promoting this other view that space-time isn't the base of reality. And I think what we're gonna find is that's gonna be very true based on recent evidence. Let's get right into this clip. Thanks for being here. When uh, Faraday did all of his experiments right, with magnets and electricity and so forth, he came up with all this wonderful empirical data and James Clerk Maxwell looked at it and wrote down a few equations, which we can now write down in a single equation, the, the Maxwell equation, if we use geometric algebra, just one equation. That opened up unbelievable technologies where, you know, people are zooming and talking to each other around the world, um, the whole electronics industry. There was something that transformed our lives in a very positive way. So already just how he starts there is amazing. If you think about it, technology goes in huge jumps and leaps and bounds, right? Basically there's a, they reach a maxima. There's a local maxima of what you can actually do with that information that you have, right? There's only so far you can go with a steam engine. Okay, if you're gonna use a steam engine, you know, you're probably not going to Mars with a steam engine, right? No matter even if it's nuclear or however you do it, okay? At some point you're gonna reach a local maximum where you can't go any further. And then what breaks it is some paradigm shift, right? Some better understanding, some new technologies, but a lot of it's just information, right? It's really that information at that time can break through to go to the next barrier. And so he relates here, Maxwell, Maxwell wrote the Maxwell equation, right? So now we, we had much better understanding of electronics. We created basically the huge revolution or, that we've seen lately. So what he's saying is we need a different paradigm. And what's even better is he says that this is starting, it's happening, it could be very fast, super rapid. We could see explosive growth from this. With the theories beyond space-time, here's one potential. Right now, most of the galaxies that we see, um, we can see them, but we know that we could never get to them, no matter how fast we traveled. They're going away from us at the speed of light or beyond, so we can't, we can't ever get to them. So there's all this beautiful real estate that's just smiling and waving at us, and we can never get to it. Yeah. But that's if we go through space-time. But if we recognize that space-time is just a data structure, it's not fundamental. We're not little things inside space-time. Space-time is a little data structure in our perceptions. Mm -hmm. It's just the other way around. So I'll show this in a future video, but Donald Hoffman is basically arguing that space-time is not the base fundamental part of reality. Space-time is just comes about as a reflection of what reality actually is. Similar arguments are made by Bernardo Castro. He basically is analytical idealism, where basically there's one consciousness or being, if you will, and we're all made up of disassociated identities. The video is referring to this study here. I'm giving you the first page uh, of the journal. Sight and blindness in the same person, gating the visual system. It's a 2015 paper uh, written by two German psychiatrists or neuroscientists. Um, it's quite amazing what they did. So they had this woman with multiple alters. And what, what was unique about her is that some of the alters claimed to be blind, even though she had no organic problem. Her eyes were perfectly functioning. Uh, her, the host's personality could see perfectly. The other alters could see perfectly. So they had this brilliant idea of hooking her up to an EEG cap and monitor her brain activity as the, the alters exchanged control, executive control. And lo and behold, when an alter that claimed to be blind had executive control, uh, activity in the visual cortex at the back of the brain had disappeared, even though the woman's eyes were open and stuff was happening in front of her. That's not something you can fake. Um, that's literal blindness, even though nothing is wrong with your eyes, with your, with, uh, with your optical nerve, nothing. 
organically, nothing's wrong with you. It's a purely mental process, but strong enough to literally blind you. And when a sighted alter or the host personality would reassume executive control, a normal brain activity in the visual cortex would return. Now, this shows you that dissociation is literally blinding. If it can do this, if it can blind you, even though your eyes are open and everything organically is right with you, then I think it's entirely reasonable and plausible to expect it to blind me to your thoughts or to what's happening in China or to what's happening in the galaxy of Andromeda. It's, it, the association is strong enough to put a wall within one and the same mind and preempt a traffic of mental contents across that wall, across that dissociative boundary. So it, it's difficult to find better evidence for how strong dissociation can be uh, than this. I think this, this goes all the way. The idea is the same, that there's a conscious underlying that actually drives the physical world into existence. So what we're seeing is that we're actually only perceptions, right? We're made up of experiences and perceptions that could all be linked back to consciousness. Okay, so it sounds crazy, but all new theories sound crazy, right? All new technological theories sound crazy. What he, what he highlights is Hoffman says, whatever theory does come about, it has to be able to show space-time, okay? Space-time is very usable. We use Newtonian physics were extremely correct, right? They were, they were true, they were correct in that sense. Even all the way back to Aristotle, right? Aristotle was true, okay? There is earth, fire, air, and water, okay? And that, it, it, it's usable, it's a usable theory. Then you go to Newtonian mechanics, okay? Newtonian mechanics, very useful for ballistic things. But when you get into like GPS timing, when you get to that sort of accuracy, in order to have accurate GPS timing, we needed Einsteinian physics. Right, so we needed that level of accuracy. So space-time has to be shown in the new theory, right? Consciousness has to be able to account for space-time. But what he's saying is consciousness does account for space-time because it's the base level. This is the same that uh, Castro would say, is that at some point, at every theory, you have to get down to what is the very end. You know, if it's a theory of what is life, you, no matter what, you could argue God, right, is essentially all the way at the end. It's always at the end. Well, why is that? Because God said so, okay, or, or something like that. That's the way it is. At some point, you have to say that's the way it is. But if you say space-time is that's the way it is, that's your end point, you can't build consciousness from that. You cannot go to consciousness. They've been unable to prove it. And over the last however many decades, we've been running in circles, making our math super complicated, extremely complicated math, because the model is ultimately not correct. But if you Make the model correct now if you imagine that faster than light is just within space time if you imagine there's a way outside of that space time okay maybe you can easily go faster than light that's what he's referencing here maybe we can go, go direct to the next star system instead of having to go through space time because it's just a data structure and when we get equations for the stuff that's beyond space time maybe we won't have to go through space time maybe we can go around it Maybe I can go to Proxima Centauri and not go through space. I can just go right there directly. It's a data structure. We can start to play with it. So, so I think that my, for what it's worth, my take would be that that the endless sequence of theories that we could contemplate building will lead to an endless sequence of new remarkable insights into the potentialities, the possibilities mm -hmm. that would that would that would seem miraculous to us and that we will be motivated to continue the exploration partly um, just for the technological innovations that that come out. But you the other thing that you mentioned though, what about just being? What if we what if we decide to, instead of all this doing and exploring what about being? My guess is that the best scientists will do both and that the act of being will be a place where they get many of their ideas and that they then pull into the conceptual realm. And I think many of the best scientists, you think, like Einstein comes to mind, right? Where these guys say, look, I didn't come up with these ideas by a conceptual analysis. I was thinking in vague images and I was, it was just something non-conceptual. And then it took me a long, long time to pull it out into concepts and then longer to put it into math. But the real insights didn't come from just slavishly, you know, 
playing with equations. They came from a, a deeper place. And so th there, there may be this going back and forth between the complete non-conceptual, where there's essentially no end to the wisdom, and then conceptual systems where there's the girdle limits um, that we have to that. And that may be, if, if consciousness is, is important and fundamental, that may be what consciousness, at least part of what consciousness is about, is this discovering itself, discovering its possibilities, so to speak. We can talk about what that might mean. Um, by going from the non-conceptual to the conceptual and back, back and forth. Wow, so I think some obviously speculation from the end there from Donald Hoffman. I have my own intuitions. You know, I, I had not heard of Donald Hoffman before this just this past few months, and I'm very happy to find his work. I'm happy to see another scientist out there working on this and showing that changes in paradigms, if correct, should bring about huge immediate changes, right? If we can pull some value from this knowledge, which I think we can. Right? That's what UAP society about is about, is gaining data about the world, specifically towards the phenomena and to help humanity, right? to help humans. Right? But information is what we're after because information is valuable. And we want to get in at the ground floor at Web3 so that that information isn't used like it always has been in the past, right? For, in the end, nefarious purposes, it seems like. We just can't get away from that. So very interesting to see Donald Hoffman out there. Amazing. He's had just had an amazing discussion with Lex Friedman. It's a very long interview. I'll be having more videos about it. There is science going on out there looking at consciousness at the base construct, but it is still very far in the fringes. It is not mainstream science. And that's where I think we can make gains in UAP society is aiming at these kind of fringe topics that people will not consider, uh, but you can get, you know, actual valid science from it. So. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button, hit that subscribe button, get notification of future videos, and you can come and join the UAP Society at our website, come to our Discord, and check out our NFT collections on OpenSea. All right, guys. Take care. Peace.